Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Cub Crafter certifies Nose Wheel X Cub NX. Oshkosh is not open for a fly-in next month. And FAA Administrator Steve Dixon testifies before the Senate. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock. Following what they say was a year-long public market survey effort, Cub Crafters has officially decided to certify and offer a nose wheel option for its Part 23 certified aircraft, the CC-19X Cub. With a robust trailing link nose wheel assembly and large Tundra tires as an option for the mains, the nose wheel equipped X Cub is capable of handling primitive landing strips and most off airport type operations. The landing loads on the nose wheel are transmitted to the airframe by a heavy duty truss, and the entire nose wheel assembly itself is a bolt on option that allows an owner to convert the airplane to a tail wheel configuration. Badge is the NX Cub for aircraft leaving the factory in the nose wheel configuration. The new tricycle gear option is available now on Experimental X Cubs through the company's Builder Assist program. And since it is based on another certified airframe, Cub Crafters expects to achieve FAA Part 23 certification early next year. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. We spent days flying and burning fuel and experiencing the new Swift fuel. I'm pretty dang impressed. I mean, to come out with a high octane replacement fuel with no lead, that's a tall order. If they continue to go the way they're going, Swift Fuel will have a replacement fuel of the market. It's better for the environment. It's cleaner on your engine. That's game changer. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Affordable and economical, Pipistrol is proud to present the Alpha Trainer. The aircraft can use as little as 2.5 gallons per hour in a flight school setting with multiple students and instructors each day. This means that 13.2 gallons of fuel can effectively give you as much as five hours of endurance. Learn more about what the Pipistrel Alpha Trainer can do for you at pipistrel-usa.com. Welcome back, it's time for today's trip around the patch. Senator Roger Wicker and Senator Maria Cantwell have put forth legislation to mandate how aircraft certification will be conducted. Called the Aircraft Safety and Certification Reform Act of 2020, the goal of this bipartisan legislation is to strengthen FAA oversight and improve aviation safety, drawing on lessons learned from the tragic Boeing 737 MAX crashes. Members of Women in Aviation International and Friends honor the women Air Force Service pilots by visiting and decorating over 100 grave sites beginning this past Memorial Day weekend. Graves from Connecticut to California were decorated with flags and flowers over the last two weeks in May to allow for social distancing practices. The experience was called a privilege to participate in by many WAI members. The first two FA-18 Block 3 Super Hornets have been delivered to the U.S. Navy for flight testing. One jet is a single CE model and the other is a two seat F model. The Navy will use the aircraft to familiarize pilots with the advanced cockpit system's new 10 inch by 19 inch touchscreen display and test the capabilities delivered with the enhanced network capability. If you were looking to buy an iconic, brand new business jet, you may have just missed your chance. Gulfstream has sold the last commercially available Gulfstream G550, clearing the way for production to wind down. The final commercial aircraft will be delivered to a customer in 2021. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Like most of you, we're still working from home. We miss being around pilots. But the most important thing right now is to mitigate your risks and use this time productively while we all get through this. Folks, King Schools is open and we're 100% operational. We're making sure that your courses work and are available for you 24 seven. 
We look forward to the time when we can see you again at the airport. Twenty twenty will go down in aviation history as a very tough year. As many conventions, air shows, and demonstrations were forced to cancel due to the coronavirus pandemic. Even EAA AirVenture, which was scheduled to take place next month, was canceled due to concerns surrounding the virus. However, even with an ironclad cancellation, there has been talk in the aviation community about venturing to Oshkosh for the week for an impromptu get-together, which is being strongly countered by the EAA and the airport itself. Whitman Regional Airport has posted a number of limitations to deter people from hanging around the property. Aircraft parking for itinerant traffic is available on the terminal and Basler FBO ramp. No permit has been obtained for aircraft parking or camping on any turf areas of the airfield and therefore is not permitted. No buildings or facilities on the AirVenture grounds will be open. The Warbird and home-built camping areas near P1 Taxiway will not be open and Boeing Plaza will not be accessible. There will be no access to EAA facilities from the airport. EAA did not obtain a Wisconsin Temporary Campground Permit for Camp Scholar in 2020, so it is illegal to accept or allow campers there this year. The EAA Aviation Museum will also be closed to the public through July. FAA Administrator Steve Dixon testified to the U.S. Senate that the Boeing 737 MAX will only return to service following the completion of a comprehensive and rigorous review process. Further, he has promised to fly the aircraft himself before certification. The FAA's return to service decision will rest solely on the agency's analysis of the data to determine whether Boeing's proposed software updates and pilot training address the factors that led to the grounding of the aircraft. Dixon stated the agency fully controls the approval process for the 737 MAX flight control systems and is not delegating this authority to Boeing. Additionally, the FAA will retain the authority to issue airworthiness certificates and export certificates of airworthiness for all new 737 MAX airplanes manufactured since the grounding. Pilots will have received all of the training they need to safely operate the aircraft before it returns. And that's it for our week, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. To stay up to date on the latest aviation airspace news this weekend, head over to aero-news.net. I'll see you Monday.